Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome everyone to the last lecture of this week for the course on developing soft skills and personality week 5 module 6 lecture number 30. So, the entire week we spent on technology and communication and we focused on various aspects of how technology has contributed to facilitate communication and at the same time to shrink in the human personality as such how mobile technology for example, has affected our personality, how netiquette norm should be followed, how email should be used in an effective manner. As the concluding lecture, I am going to focus specifically on email etiquette in this lecture. And before I start, let us take a quick look at what I did in the previous lecture. In the previous one, I uh, talked about netiquette as a polite and acceptable form of mannerisms for communicating with someone using the internet. Now, why netiquette? I uh, focused on some reasons as why you should use it when it looks like almost you can be uh, very free to use the net. People become insensitive while using computers. They behave like machines and then they forget that the person at the other side is a human being. While formal training has been given for writing letters, business letters and all that those days, nowadays no formal training is given for anybody to use internet or to send emails. So, you need to know the netiquette norm and you should train, equip yourself with some basic fundamental rules. The 5 P's of soft skills which we have talked about are completely ignored by most of the people when they use the net. In that context, I also introduced to you some basic netiquette norms. For instance, I started with the first cardinal rule that the receiver is actually a human being fully alive and kicking. So, the other person is uh, there fully alive and this side you should not think that that is an inert inanimate object sitting there and then will be cold and have no response to whatever kind of communication that you send. So, remember that in your mind first. Netiquette is all about showing emotions, showing that you are a human being and not a robot. You can use emoticons where appropriate in uh, even in formal communication it is allowed now, but to be on the safe side always use appropriate language as much as if you can use polite expressions like the ones that we have discussed before. Simple things like thank you, please and then explaining using would you like to and then polite forms as much as possible in your communication and appropriate language, not expressing negative emotions like anger, okay, frustration and then using proper language that will always keep you on the safe side of netiquette norm. Be careful also in choosing the right words since they can be stored permanently. Anything that you write, so think about what you are writing, so that can be stored permanently and that can be used against you at a later stage. And you should also keep in mind that it is the receiver who controls emails once they are sent. You think that you have absolute control? No. The receiver can do so many things. The receiver can actually put you to shame. The receiver can humiliate you with the mail that you uh, thought that the receiver should delete immediately, but the receiver decides to use it against you. And overall while concluding, I suggested you should be always correct and in particular you should be ethically correct when you are sending emails. So, by being ethically correct, I said that you may think that uh, it is your right to do something, but you should always keep in mind what is right, what is appropriate and then you should do the thing. So, you always know what is morally right or what is morally bad and do not use bad communication, especially the unethical ones, do not load unethical ones on the internet, which can catch you unawares and then leave you with lot of embarrassment at a later stage. 
and as uh, participants who wish to develop soft skills that is totally unrequired, unwarranted. Now, in this lecture, the concluding uh, lecture on technology and communication, let us focus on email etiquette, the kind of norms that you need particular with regard to using emails. Now, the most important thing that I want you to follow, I would rather even request you is to make sense. Okay, when you send an email, make sense. You have seen the examples that I showed to you in the last one, some of which did not make any sense to me or to you. And then those were sent by people and then thinking that they have actually made sense. So, try to make sense, I mean give some meaning, give a proper message, though it is difficult to, because you sent thoughtless ones. So, that is why it is becoming difficult. When it comes to emails, it is rather so easy to send no sense or nonsense emails, because of the reason that people just type whatever comes to their mind without bothering to know whether what is expressed clearly reflects their thoughts. Making sense is difficult as it means curtailing some bad writing habit accumulated over a period of time. Again, it is a choice between giving up old bad habits which refuse to die and then choosing to adopt good right habits which will take time only in practice you will be able to imbibe them. So, try to imbibe the good habits in terms of email writing which I am going to specify in the next few slides. Overall, in order to make sense, in order to make some meaning out of what you are sending, plan your email beforehand, even a worthwhile exercise to note down what you want to convey, okay. note down the important points you want to convey, check your uh, email whether the points have come clearly or not. Also you decide the sequence in which you want to convey the points, which one you want to tell first, which one you want to tell in the middle. So, plan the beginning, middle and end. Sometimes an important thing can be said at the end after talking simple normal ones. Sometimes you think that the most important thing has to come as the first one and then you try to argue or you try to substantiate you, your view point based on that. So, you decide the sequence also and it will really help you if you prepare yourself by writing a rough draft. Write the rough draft on a word document and then present it in a readable manner using paragraph divisions, checking the spelling and all that and ensuring that you are clear, you are concise and then you are coherent. Incoherence that is order is not decided properly, the sequence is not maintained properly will also completely baffle the reader, it will confuse your uh, receiver. So, be coherent. What are the other simple steps you can follow in order to make sense? Avoid using worn out phrases that does not make any sense in the context. So, some old idiomatic expressions. So, idiomatic expressions which have no meaning for example, in your own context, in a local context, some idiomatic expressions have originated from some culture somewhere and then they do not have any relevance to you. Similarly, metaphors and similes, the comparisons, if they are not used properly, they may confuse the reader and lead to miscommunication. The most important thing you should avoid in email communication is miscommunication and it is not worth causing it by wrong use of expressions by overt use of metaphors and similes, thinking that it will look nice for the reader, but actually causing confusion and miscommunication is not required. Use simple words with short sentence constructions, do not go for very flowery, decorative, polysyllabic words that is many syllabic words, long word and even long and complicated sentences, even that you should be avoiding. If you can keep these things in your mind, your mail will become very clear and it will be 
cross the barrier of machine very easily and reach the other person in a very human manner. The next one that you should keep in mind is spend an extra minute, just a minute to save an hour of the receiver. You say you just spend one more minute in doing some checking very quickly, but it can save an hour for the receiver. How? Because you did not bother certain things, but the other person took about one hour to figure out what you actually want to convey. Let us see how you can spend that extra minute, uh, so that you can save an hour of the receiver. You should spend extra time on editing the text, checking the spelling, grammar, inserting emoticons if it is likely to confuse the receiver, making use of punctuation marks, dividing lengthy matter into readable paragraphs, remembering to type a descriptive subject line and finally, by not sending an unsolicited and irrelevant mail. Now, let us briefly look at each of these aspects in the following subheadings one by one. First, keep it short. How can you keep it short? Keep your emails focused in content, that is what is meant by short. It is very focused, no extra uh, frills are attached and it should be short in length, should not write long emails. People generally do not have time to read long emails. I know people who by default delete lengthy mails, they do not read that at all. Sometimes they look at the subject, sometimes they quickly browse one or two lines, they just delete. They do not think it is the right way to send an email, they do not give a damn, they just delete it when you send lengthy mails. And you keep wondering why despite the 10 page mail you wrote, there is not even one sentence reply coming from the other person. The other person is just in disgust deleted the email that was taking so much time of this person and he is not able to figure out what is there in the mail. So, keep it short and do not think that you will write an essay, you will write so many pages to impress the receiver. The thumb rule is that if you cannot convey an idea effectively in a short paragraph, you can never do the same in a long essay. In a long essay, you keep on writing convoluted sentences and then you want to convey one simple idea and you are not able to convey that in so many paragraphs. But if you tell yourself the other rule that one idea you will convey in one paragraph and then stick to that idea in that paragraph, you would have conveyed everything that you wanted to convey in about 10 pages. So, there is no merit in writing 10 pages when you can say the same thing in one paragraph in just one fourth of the page. In fact, people will appreciate you, people will be very grateful to you, if you can convey the thing in just three, four simple sentences than writing three, four pages. Your emails will always be read instead of uh, sending it to the trash can immediately or putting filter so that your mail automatically goes to the trash can. In case an email has to be significantly and justifiably lengthy owing to the nature of the subject matter, sometimes you give a report, okay. sometimes you present a very lengthy argument. Now, in that case also do not give the impression that it is one long email you are writing, it is a long essay use sub headings, okay. divide them into paragraphs and let each paragraph may have a sub heading. Use sufficient spaces in between paragraphs. In email, there is a tendency to write without any paragraph space. People are not able to distinguish between one paragraph and the other one. So, give sufficient space to make it easy for reading and understanding. So, the eyes are happy, they feel very pleased to look at those emails where there are blank spaces in between the paragraphs. So, the eyes are not straying to look at and identify the main content. 
The next important norm, pay attention to subject lines. That is, there is a subject line on the top where you type what is the subject, what is the topic, what is the core idea. Now, many people do not pay attention to the subject lines and I would rather tell you this. If you tell me the subject lines that you keep sending or if you give me 50 emails that you have sent and if I can analyze the subject lines, I can tell you who you are because subject lines tell me so much about the kind of person that you are, what kind of personality you have. Subject lines apart from describing the inner content of the matter have much to tell about you as a person, whether you are sloppy that I can see from the subject line, casual, flippant, uncouth, uncivilized or just lazy, uncaring, unmindful or are you sincere that also can be seen from the subject line, serious, meticulous that is paying attention to detail that can also be observed from the subject line, dedicated to the job, to whatever mail that you are communicating, professional, sophisticated and even stylish. You can have a personality, you can have a style in which you write emails and that will also attract people towards you. Do you have that? That can be seen from the subject line itself whether you have that style or not. Now, in subject lines, the worst subject line that an email can have is no subject. Often you will see an email coming to you and on the top it is written no subject. Because the email is either sent in a hurry without subject line, so the person is just in a hurry, so he wrote something and then sent it or the subject is just not thought of, something is written, but the person who sent it is not having time to think about what is the subject. Now, this indicates that the sender is unmindful of the precious time the receiver has to spend in opening, reading and understanding the subject and quite often realize that it is an irrelevant message that needs to be deleted. So, so much time is spent by the receiver just to open it and check whether it is the right one and then after that uh, the person realizes that it should be deleted. So, that is again not required at all. Subject lines should clearly express the content, whatever is inside should be expressed outside in the subject line. There is also another uh, principle in which you respect the receiver by giving freedom to the receiver to exercise an option of opening the mail or deleting it. Suppose in the subject line itself it is clearly written, the person knows whether it is relevant to him or her and then the person can delete it immediately. But you should not use tempting subject lines like free holiday trip to Goa. So, the person opens and then you advertise, you say something about yourself, but inside it does not mean anything or you write open and become Bill Gates and you say something about working hard and all that and nothing to do with uh, becoming rich quickly, stay young forever. Now, these are tempting subject lines, but then uh, people after some time if they start getting this kind of things from you, they will again not even open the mail and they will form a notion that at the same time you should not over emphasize the subject by capitalizing them or by creating a false sense of urgency. Repeat whatever I have done and then send it immediately. Okay. So, that use of word immediate kind attention, immediate attention and then even using capital letters will give a impression to the other person that you are creating urgency which is not really required. I heard of a story of a manager who thought that he should gain the attention of his employees all the time. So, he had a standard subject line and all the time it is written in caps also and he wrote urgent matter. So, any mail that will go from him will have this urgent matter and the next two words are respond immediately. 
urgent matter respond immediately. Now, in due course of time, initially employees thought that okay, this is a serious one, they looked at, they realized that even if they uh, respond to that after a month, nothing will happen. And even if they do not respond to it, nothing will happen. So, in due course, what happened? The employees never responded, they just stopped responding to the email at all. Now, you can understand when you repeat the same subject matter, it loses its sense of urgency and emphasis. The same subject matter that is repeated will also lose its emphasis and then false sense of urgency, urgent matter and then using capital letters for over emphasis. So, everything is completely losing the purpose if it is repeated endlessly, unmindfully and thinking that it will create overall importance and it is not happening. What can you do in subject lines? Use a short descriptive phrase indicating the core idea of the email. If I ask you, what is your email about? Can you tell me in a sentence? Okay? You tell me in a sentence and then I tell you, in the sentence, can you identify 2-3 important words, keywords? Okay, you say yes and these are the 3 important words and those words should be there in the subject line. You yourself can ask this, what is it I want to convey? What should be my subject line? And the subject line is something that you can tell somebody about your email in just 2 to 3 words, sometimes a single word, not more than 4 or 5 words. If you are going to add details, it can go beyond that, but then uh, the some examples which I am going to show you it goes beyond 4 or 5 words, but fine because they are also done with a purpose for the sake of clarity. For example, if it is a meeting, it is not enough just to say meeting or director's meeting, it will be helpful to the receivers if you can specify the time, the date and venue in the subject line itself. Look at the example I have given, director's meeting. Okay. So, that is the whole email about, but in the subject line itself if you can say it is on 21st June 2016 date and then time. 10 a.m. venue, conference room. So, assuming that there are 5 conference rooms, which one you are saying? That is CR 3, conference room number 3. Now, people need not even go through that immediately. They can just take a look and understand that, okay, there is a meeting. After some time, whenever they get a time, they can read the contents and find out why the meeting is to be conducted. Similarly, if you are inviting people for a talk, for a lecture, you can even mention the name of the speaker and topic on the subject line, so as to attract the people and so as to alert the people and give the very basic information that is needed. Look at the example I have given, talk on cybernetics. So, that is a subject, the topic is a itself a talk on cybernetics, by whom? Kevin Warwick. LH 16. Now, in institutes, especially like IIT Kanpur, LH is known to everybody, it is lecture hall 16. But in a place where this abbreviation is not known, if it is sent outside IIT Kanpur, so then you have to write in full form, you have to write lecture hall, then write the date and the time. So, this makes it very clear and it you are giving a choice freedom to the receiver whether to open the email or not, whether to attend to the lecture or not. Okay, Let us say somebody in uh, uh, like literature or fine arts or economics decides or thinks that oh, this is purely a lecture on computer science and then I have no interest in this. The person need not even open the mail and read it, it saves so much time. So, overall this will help the receiver to have a quick idea about the mail even without opening it. So, this way people will be very grateful to you, happy to receive your emails if you are very clear in the subject line. The next one you should keep in mind is you should respect reply. You should respect reply in the sense you should not overuse 
the same mail again and again with the subject line where it comes like re re re. So, avoid this re 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 and so on indicating that it is a reply for a reply for a reply for a reply for a reply endlessly. Now, this again completely occupies the subject line and nobody knows what is that getting repeated. If you are in the chain decide to break the uh, re monotonous loop and then just even either you keep one re and then say what is the subject or even you remove that uh, re and then make it a new subject. Okay. You can even say follow up of this activity, continuation of this idea. Use a subject line while replying a mail instead of leaving the automated re for reply. Now, when you remove all extra re's and then just add the most important content of your email, it will again give lot of relief to the person who is reading it. Look at the example I have given, an employee applied for loan and it is urgent loan, he needed some amount and he, it is a medical emergency, he needed uh, that for the treatment of his uh, son who is hospitalized and then he wanted money from the employer. Now, he was greatly tensed whether he is getting the amount or not, whether the higher authorities will sanction or the not. The employers reply with the subject line re okay, that is reply amount sanctioned can be a great relief to the employee even before opening the mail. So, even by looking at it amount sanctioned he feels so relieved, stress is relieved. Then he opens and reads how much amount is sanctioned, so how it is being done, what, how should he repay and all that. Similarly, do not use an old mail for the sake of address without changing the subject matter. This indicates sloppiness, laziness which will be worse than sending the mail without any subject. Look at another example, as a convener of the department postgraduate committee sometime before. I received a mail from a colleague of mine with the subject matter re vending machine. So, the mail is sent with a request to me to forward a new PG course developed by the sender, but the subject line is vending machine. Okay. So, informally I was also involved in uh, procuring a vending machine for the department and I was also in the uh, committee related to this. But the person just to take my address used this as a re to that, but said that could you just forward this course. So, obviously what has happened, my colleague has used an earlier mail in which we had shared some suggestions on the vending machine, but to have that as a subject line for a course forwarding request, so you know that is too inappropriate. So, knowing what should be the subject line and then removing what is inappropriate and carrying the time of the receiver will make you actually respect reply. The next email etiquette you should keep in mind is that you should avoid typing in full capitals either the subject as I gave the example before where the employer used full caps, nobody considered it as a serious one. Now, people have a tendency to use full caps even in the body of the mail that you should avoid unless it is very important and even in that case it may be a word or a phrase or a sentence. Why should you avoid this? Unnecessary use of capitals is considered shouting. So, the capital letters give over emphasis and gives a feeling that you are shouting or yelling. Moreover, Long sentences with full capital letters are difficult to comprehend and eyes take more time to capture the message. Now, you could see the difference just by reading the previous sentence itself. Even when I am reading, I am trying to read, it is very difficult for me to read capital letters at one go. But if they are mixed with small letters and capitals are used only at the beginning of a sentence or for proper nouns or for names okay, or for some terms where it should begin with capital or some abbreviations which are uh, used 
for combining some terms and making it an acronym. Otherwise, you do not have to use full capitals thinking that it will give some kind of emphasis and importance to your mail. The next email etiquette that you should keep in mind is no random CCing. Okay, this CC actually means carbon copy. Okay, those days in typewriter they used to keep a carbon copy and send it to the person the copy of that original one. Nowadays CC actually is sending you the original mail, but in the CC column you indicate that you are not the main person. But do not random CC, somebody has replied to you with copy to others, but you have to decide whether you should also reply to the person directly or you should reply all and you should send copies to all. This is a very crucial decision you have to make. Do not copy to many or reply all when the message seeks the attention of a single receiver. I showed you one email where the person wanted internship but has cc'd to almost all the email IDs available at uh, IIT Kanpur. So, do not copy to many or reply all when the message seeks the attention of a single receiver. If you do that, that single receiver will fail to notice it and you will not get a reply. It is also considered rude, bad mannered, ill mannered, discourteous and even uncouth because the sender is taking for granted the time of unsolicited receivers. Everybody looks at it and then deletes and even just the time it takes to identify that the mail is unwarranted, it is a spam and then to delete it, it is unworthy, it is just wasteful. Hence habitual that is people just reply all. And then they realize, oh, I forgot, I just spent the reply all button instead of just reply. So, this is a habitual one, inadvertent copying without even knowing that you are committing a mistake, unintentionally copying to many. So, there you put a check, you ask, should it go to all these people or should it go to only one person? Avoid this CCing and replying all when it is not required at all costs. So, that again gives a very good profile about you as a person who is using email etiquette on the net. With regard to use of abbreviations, another tendency in email is they use all kinds of abbreviations, especially the chat language and the abbreviations which are used in chat in uh, social network, they try to use in email also. So, you have to use abbreviations discreetly. That means, you have to use it judicially, you have to know what is appropriate and known to all and avoid that which is not known to so many people. So, use abbreviations or acronyms which are commonly known and universally recognizable. Some examples if you look at it, aka also known as ASAP as soon as possible, BTW by the way. And even like for see you later, people write C U L 8 or later, F Y I for your information, K I T keep in touch, L O L laughing out loud, S Y S see you again, T Y V M thank you very much, W R T with respect to. Now, some people even do not know this, but what I am trying to tell you is that at least these are commonly known and universally recognizable. People at least can recognize this easily. But using abbreviations according to one's whims and fancy, the person decides I will just abbreviate these words and use it in the manner that I like. And that too with inconsistent spellings, okay, already you have abbreviated and spellings in somewhere for between you write B E T N in some other place you write b n. Okay. So, that inconsistency in the spelling you use even for abbreviation can cause huge confusion to the receiver. So, the message can be distorted or misrepresented and result in evoking a kind of negative response which can be easily avoided if you pay attention to the use of abbreviations. Be careful when you use them. 
Now, the other email etiquette which I would say as a teacher of English and language and literature, I would say that it is a very important email etiquette and you should uh, pay enough attention in order to develop your soft skills. This is to tell you that you should avoid spelling, grammar mistakes and typographical errors. Typographical errors are errors which come as you type. So, instead of one key you press the other one, but then in your hurry you do not have time to check them. So, you send it as it is and think that people will understand. So, when you send the email finally, check your email for spelling, grammar mistakes and typographical errors. Now, today all emails have built in spell checkers, grammar checkers and even as you type, so they will underline. If they do not do it, you can take it to word or other document and you can put it and see. So, the spelling mistake normally gets underlined by red color and grammar mistakes are underlined by green color or in some uh, software it can be blue color, whatever color it is. It shows you that it is a mistake and even by a right click you can easily change the uh, wrong spelling to the right one. Why do not you do that? Use the spell checker, you do not have to go to dictionary. If only you spend that one minute extra, you will save so much time, you will avoid miscommunication. And pay attention to those underlined words, do not ignore them. When the computer is underlining and telling you there is something wrong, so you pay attention by that you will not only save plenty of the receiver's time, but also ensure that your message is communicated effectively and the receiver got the exact import of your communication. Moreover, bad spelling and frequent typographical errors reflect illiteracy and lack of professionalism. Illiteracy in the sense that not that you are uneducated, but it shows that you are totally ignorant of this netiquette norms. And of course, it will also indicate that you are not a professional uh, in using email communication. And the next thing is equally important where I suggest recommend to you that you should take note of punctuation marks because people think when they write email, it is a wrong thinking, it is a misconception that punctuation marks are not necessary while sending emails. It is only when you write letter by hand or get it typed okay, and not send it, but hand it over manually, people think that punctuation is required. In fact, email, electronic mail is substituting your manual efforts. So, whatever you do manually, whatever norms, structure that you follow should also be followed here. Apart from that, for clear communication, punctuation marks, capitalization, spaces after punctuations are very necessary. Now, I am just going to show you one uh, example again I received from a student who is obviously operating under this wrong notion, misconception that punctuation marks are not required and the teacher will understand. And it shows how the sender has no regard for punctuation or capitalization and then personal abbreviations which greatly affect the readability and effectiveness of the mail. Take a look at this mail, we are not going to analyze, but then you see there is absolutely no comma, no full stop and then you do not know when a sentence has started and where it is ending, no capital letter to indicate that a sentence is beginning no full stop to indicate that the sentence is ending. Look at the names like uh, for example, B or Agarwal. So, the initials of the names which should be capitalized or not capitalized and even the name of something like Saraswati Devi College, again it should be capitalized. If you look at the abbreviations used B T C O Z, okay. is it but? or between cause I understand it is because and for the D is used, W T I do not know whether it is weight or with regard to with respect to any error A N Y 
but a n a n i is written error word itself is written with a spelling mistake what kind of impression the other person will have about this email no regard for punctuation marks no way of telling when the sentence is beginning where it is ending so this will definitely irritate or annoy the other person and even if the person is caring concerned about knowing what the person wants to convey it's very difficult to understand the actual message from this email so this is something that you should completely avoid and pay attention to punctuation marks now towards the end i just want to conclude with the final etiquette norm that you should keep in mind which again is a very simple one but most of you overlook check your computer clock sometimes you reset your computer sometimes you uh, reformat it and sometimes you ignore the timing that is shown on the computer sometimes it is synchronized with the local time sometimes it is synchronized with some other time which you didn't note sometimes it is done in such a manner that it is showing indicating uh, the past hour instead of the present hour so set your system clock correctly and decide whether it is am or pm okay sometimes it's showing am where it should be pm now you will profusely confuse your reader during the fixing up an appointment for future or even calling for a meeting while your mail would indicate a time lapsed in the past let's say you are sending an email by saying that let's meet tomorrow okay and let's say today is 9th and then you are saying that let's meet tomorrow now your mail time is indicating that it is sent on 7th and tomorrow actually means 8th and you are sending on 9th assuming that they'll meet you on 10th now most people will see that okay they saw the mail much later maybe their uh, email there was some problem internet connectivity there was some problem so they received your mail one or two days late and the meeting was already over so you go and sit for the people to come and the people if they are again inefficient communicators they presume and then they don't attend the meeting if they are good communicators they would seek clarifications they will email you they'll check with you they'll call you on phone they'll message you but most of the times as i said good communication needs lot of coordination which in the next week i'll try to talk to you about becoming good and effective communicator but at this time let us assume that most of the people are busy most of the people presume things so they don't even bother to check the actual real time in which you might have sent it so avoid this and uh, uh, minimize the huge mistakes that you might be causing to the company or the organization or the people whom you represent in conclusion i would like to tell you that netiquette norms if followed could generate a high level of professionalism and likability people will not only look up to you as a person who is good in following the norms but also they'll appreciate they like you and result in getting favorable responses in internet based communication whatever you send you receive a favorable response and that is one hallmark of effective communication which as i said again we'll discuss in the next week now use this lecture and the previous one as a quick checklist for netiquette and build up a reputation for sending good engaging thoughtful time saving useful effective and interesting emails your mails should be read your mails should be responded to your mails should not directly go to the trash can your mails should not be filtered for reading it later or for not reading it at all so whether you use the priority or not whenever people see your mail they should get the impression that this person sends email only when there is an important content and only when it is necessary so i should check this mail first this person never sends a spam so very sensible person knows all the netiquette norms 
hopefully this lecture will help you to do that and use this as a kind of checklist. As a concluding thought to the entire week on technology and communication, remember we have talked about basically on so many technological inventions which have actually facilitated communication and most of these gadgets whether it is mobile or email, they were all invented for using the net, for using it for communication in order to save time. But the moral we learn when we understand that they are actually being misused or they are not being properly and effectively used is that thanks to technology, we can now waste time with an efficiency unless until now unimaginable, all in the name of saving time. Just remember once again, thanks to technology, we can now waste time with an efficiency until now unimaginable. We never thought of this before these inventions that we can use gadgets which we are invented for saving time, but we are wasting time like anything all in the name of saving time. But the entire week's content is to tell you to use effectively and save not only your time, but the time of others who are involved with you in communication. Thank you so much for being with me for this entire week and then uh, benefiting from the videos on technology and communication. In the next week, we will focus on communication as such. Thanks once again for watching this video.